Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new. My name is Courtney and I do a lot of food and kitchen related content here. If you like grocery hauls, cooking videos, and maybe even some meal prep, make sure you smash that subscribe button, stick around, it's 100% free, but you can't see it, but it puts a huge smile on my face every time I get a new subscriber. All right y'all, um, before we jump into the recipes, I did ask the last couple of weeks what y'all thought about doing cleaning videos. I used to do them and I haven't done them in a while. Uh, most of y'all were not here for the cleaning videos, so I'm going to put that on the back burner. Doesn't mean I won't do them ever again. It just means right now I'm going to kind of look a different direction. I think I'm going to work on a meal prep video. Hopefully it will be out this coming week. Um, let's see how things go. We've got a lot going on right now because we're out of um, on summer break, out of homeschool for a couple of weeks, and I plan a ton of stuff when we're not in school. All right, so let's jump right in. The first recipe is this lemon pasta, and this was a huge hit, so refreshing and delicious for summer, easy to make, very fast. So I started off with a quarter cup of wine because I've got some in my fridge to use up. You could use pasta water or chicken broth or just plain water, it's fine. And then I threw in a couple of tablespoons of butter. You don't have to be super exact, so do like three to four tablespoons. Let that melt, whisk it around, and then I threw in the juice and zest of two lemons. And I seasoned this with some pepper, no salt, because we're adding Parmesan cheese, which is super, super salty. If you have the green shaker tub, that's fine. Um, and if you have like the regular, just kind of super powdery, that's great. Um, even if it's from the deli, I did not. I had to shred mine, it's fresh. Uh, so I was really slowly adding it and whisking it in so it didn't clump up on me because we want this to be a nice creamy sauce. There's not much to the sauce. It's very simple, but I, I didn't want it to be like full of lumps and clumps or anything like that. So I am mixing in about half to three quarters of a cup of Parmesan cheese. I'm pretty heavy handed with Parm. I love it. I think it tastes amazing. And because there's not a lot going on, I really did want to dress this up. Um, so I just very slowly added it in and whisked it and you can see my sauce is getting thicker So the butter kind of makes it creamy and emulsifies it a little bit and then that cheese tightens it up quite a bit Just keep it moving for a few minutes so that it um, it doesn't like form one giant clump and <clears throat> You're gonna have a beautiful sauce So the next thing we're gonna do is slowly ladle in a little bit of our pasta water to get this to the liquid consistency that we want I want mine to be a little bit runny and you want it to um, be a little more watery than you expect. Once we add our noodles in, because they're not fully cooked when we put them in here, they're going to really soak that up. So we're going to be adding more pasta water as we go. Um, this is a really great way to cook pasta, even if you're just doing like regular tomato sauce. Uh, the, the pasta just comes out so much better. It's just cooked into the noodles. The flavor is amazing. They're really glossy and beautiful. So I cook my noodles until they're about, you know, two minutes shy of being done. And then I go ahead and add them to my sauce and my skillet. I did toss my lemon rinds in there just because when those heat up, they'll release a little bit more of their oil and flavor. And this is lemon pasta, so that's what I wanted. And now I'm just gonna keep the pasta moving and add in some of that pasta water as needed. You can see it's like a creamy sauce on the bottom. It's all the starch that's in that pasta water um, mixed with like the butter and the lemon juice. And it makes a creamy sauce. It's kind of magical. It's how original Alfredo was made. There was not cream in it or anything like that. It was pasta water and Parmesan cheese and butter. So that's essentially what we're doing here, but with lemon. I did go ahead and add some extra pepper and I just served some crispy Tyson chicken tenders on the side that I threw in the air fryer. Nothing fancy, but they were an absolute perfect pairing for this. All right. Don't sleep on nacho bars this summer, guys. I know that, I mean, everybody does like tacos and all that, but nachos are fantastic. And I just wanted to throw that out there as a reminder that they're not gonna like heat up your kitchen a whole bunch. And it's a great way to kind of make everybody happy. So I just cooked some ground beef in my skillet. You can see there I'm breaking it up and I'm gonna do something that you guys hardly ever see. I think this will be like the second time you've ever seen this on my channel. But I'm gonna add taco seasoning, pre-made store-bought taco seasoning. If you're a long time viewer, you know that is not my favorite. I typically season my own taco meat because I want it to taste uh, less like a packaged seasoning and less like Taco Bell and more like what I get at the restaurants. Um, where I live out here. However, I'm going for Taco Bell, Taco Bell vibes for this meal. So I added the Taco Bell seasoning to my ground beef and then I had a spread y'all. It's Hatch Chili season and I was at Market Street because one of my kids was sick and I had to get antibiotics. So I got some Hatch Chili Pico de Gallo. I've got shredded cheese, I've got lettuce, I've got liquid cheese. That stuff is liquid gold if you ask me when it comes to nachos. I made that zesty um, ranch sauce from the copycat Taco Bell recipe a couple of weeks ago. Refried beans, ground beef. I put it on some Tostito Scoops, well the store brand. Look at that, it's like a magical, delicious taco salad nacho creation. It was fantastic. 
Don't sleep on it, it is so good, you guys. It's a perfect way to get you through summer without heating up that kitchen. All right, so jerk chicken bowls with mango salsa and coconut rice. This was like definitely one of our healthy meals of the week. It was really, really good. So right now I'm making the jerk seasoning. I didn't buy store-bought, I just made it my myself. I will link a recipe for this down below that I used to create this, this spice blend. It's a lot of things, but it's probably things you have on hand. So uh, it's garlic powder, smoked and regular paprika, onion powder, thyme, brown sugar, ginger, salt, pepper, cayenne, allspice, parsley, nutmeg, cinnamon, paprika, and red pepper flakes if you want some extra added heat. You don't have to add the paprika or the red pepper flakes. I did not add either of those so my children would try this. Um, I didn't want it to be spicy for my younger two because they don't like spicy stuff. And then I cooked the chicken in the air fryer. Y'all, this was magical because for whatever reason, this came out tasting like fried chicken. I don't know why there's no like batter on it or anything like that, but the spice blend, I guess, must be close to what they use at like KFC and stuff like that um, because it had such a really great flavor. I was just so impressed. I would make the chicken again and serve it a bunch of different ways for sure. Um, I was also very heavy handed with the spice blend because that's how I roll. Um, I just, chicken's kind of bland on its own and if you're cooking in the air fryer, then I really like to have a good spice coating on it or a really good marinade so that it has a really an amazing flavor. If I'm grilling it, not so much because it takes on that grill flavor, that smoke, but air fryer, I definitely want a lot of flavor. So I'm using some chicken thighs there. I like chicken thighs, especially in the air fryer. I think that um, they cook beautifully that way because they don't dry out. Chicken breasts tend to dry out but these thighs remain like nice and juicy and delicious. I do like to go through and kind of trim off some of those huge chunks of fat that are often on my um, boneless, skinless chicken thighs. I find it constantly when I buy them. I leave some fat on there just because it's good to keep the chicken from drying out, but I don't want like those huge, huge blobs. They get kind of gross and like funky whenever you're going to eat your chicken. And I also am making sure there's no little bone shards in there because occasionally I will find bone shards and nobody wants to bite down on that. So I'm pretty picky about like picking through my chicken and making sure that there's not any. If I'm not trimming the um, fat off of them, I just kind of run my hand through the inside just to make sure that all the bone was gotten out. It's just, I don't want to bite into that afterwards and get stabbed in the mouth or anything like that. It's happened before I learned my lesson. So I am pretty cautious about it now. You can see this doesn't taste, take long. It's pretty easy and it's usually like there's a fat blob on each end of the thigh and I'm just removing that and then I'm making sure that they're nice and open and flat so that I can season them really really well. I like to start on the inside because that's the side I'm actually going to cook face side up <laughs> um, the first go around and then I'm going to go ahead and add in all of my seasonings and I'm really getting it down in there like I said I'm heavy handed I will kind of mash and rub this into the chicken and make sure it adheres for the most part so we get a really nice coating and like I said this would be fantastic on its own it didn't I mean the, the meal was great as it was but this chicken had the most incredible flavor just like fried chicken I was so impressed it was so so good I absolutely loved it so I'm gonna be keeping the spice blend like in my back pocket ready to use on a whim because this is definitely really really great um, the only other time I've had chicken that came out with something similar was a um, one that I just made on a whim trying to make some Mexican style chicken and it also kind of had a little bit of a fried chicken vibe going on when I air fried it I don't know what it is that causes that but something about the spice blend maybe it just forms a coating that I don't know mimics the flavor I'm not sure but as you can see I'm pressing that in and I'm gonna go ahead and use the last of that spice blend up because there's just a little bit left and I don't want to waste it but it's not really enough to save so let's just make sure everybody's cut Lots of seasoning down in every single nook and cranny before we move on. And like I said, I am gonna air fry this. So I will spray my little air fryer basket here in a minute with nonstick cooking spray. And I'll put the thighs in for 12 minutes at 375 and then I'll flip them over and cook them for another 10 minutes at 375. But always check the chicken. Um, don't just go off my time because your chicken might be a different size. So you might need to adjust that cooking time more or less just to make sure that they cook all the way through and they don't get burnt. I always keep an eye on mine while they're cooking. Now I meant to, and I tried to film the coconut rice portion, and I don't know what happened. The footage is not on my, my camera. I don't know what went wrong. It was super simple, um, and I will link the recipe down below for y'all, but it's just a can of coke. I doubled the recipe. It's a can of coconut water, and it is some uh, regular water, and it's a couple of cups of rice, and you just cook it. 
really nice and it's creamy and it has an amazing flavor and it pairs really beautifully with this uh, this dish. Especially if you've got like the cayenne pepper and the red pepper flakes on the chicken so it's spicy and you've got that cooling coconut rice. So here I am totally butchering a mango. I love mango. It's one of my favorite fruits. I don't get it very often because they are such a pain in the butt to have to cut up. I hate those pits in the middle and the skin is so tough so like don't uh, don't look at me for advice on how to slice a mango. <laughs> I am not the expert but I just kind of try to cut it off around the pit and then just remove the skin and slice and dice the mango. I like bigger chunks. I love mango and I like mango with both chicken and fish. I think it tastes amazing. It pairs beautifully with it. I did just snack on that piece because like I said I love mango. Um, but I'm just chopping up one mango because my husband's not the biggest fan. My son and I, my oldest son and I both like it. But my um, my husband doesn't and I knew my youngest two weren't going to eat the, the salsa. Uh, you, you're supposed to use like red onions for this recipe but I have green onions in my fridge so green onions it is. I'm just chopping up a couple of those and um, I'll add those to the, uh, the bowl with the mango. And then I've got some cilantro and I'm just going to chop up a little handful of that as well. And then I'm gonna use a poblano pepper. You can use jalapenos. I had poblanos because I was gonna make some um, confetti eggs, but I hadn't done it yet. So I had all these poblanos hanging out in my fridge. I was like, well, I need to use them or lose them. So I went ahead and used a poblano for this, which was interesting because typically these don't have any heat, but for whatever reason, this happens to me occasionally. This is not a lot of heat. Um, it's happened before where I was I was slicing one without gloves on and like my hand swelled and turned red and everything. So occasionally these guys will like just sneak up on you and trick you. This was one of them. I was surprised when I ate the salsa. I was like, I didn't put a jalapeno in here, but you would not know it because there was a, a pretty decent uh, bite from that poblano and it was really good, especially with that creamy coconut rice. But uh, typically you would want to use jalapeno. I'm just working with what I've got. I don't always keep jalapenos on hand. I find that they just don't stay good as long in my fridge, especially during the summer when it's super hot. Um, they tend to kind of wilt a lot faster. My mango was a little bit underripe, so I seasoned this with salt and pepper and lime juice, and then I did add a little squeeze of honey, just because I know that mango is supposed to be sweet, and um, I know that this one was a little more tart because it wasn't quite ripe yet. So I added in just a squeeze of honey, and it, it was perfect. Like, it had the sweetness I was looking for that mango should have had, and it was missing. Um, and this was really, really good. Oh man, this was eaten with chips, this was eaten with just rice, and this was eaten with this dish. Um, we love this stuff, so, so delicious. And it was really nice for the summer because it's ni nice and cool and crisp and refreshing. Um, that's kind of like what I'm always looking for in summer dishes. I don't wanna have to heat my kitchen up and I want something that's really crisp and cool and refreshing. There's the chicken after I air fried it and then I just sliced it up and served it like that. Uh, so good. So, so delicious. I will link this recipe below for y'all because it is fantastic. All right. So the last recipe of the week, crispy garlic butter fish. So I am just kind of like riffing on a crispy garlic butter shrimp recipe I found on Pinterest, which is very similar to, um, magic crispy baked shrimp, which is what I was going to do, but I found this one and it had smoked paprika. And if you've been around for a while, you know, I love that. So here we are. Um, I started off with taking half a stick of butter, melting it and adding in my panko breadcrumbs and then seasoning this with salt and pepper and smoked paprika and giving it a really good mix so that the breadcrumbs are fully coated in all the spices and the butter. That's just going to help them get beautifully crispy and delicious whenever, um, we bake this in the oven. I was uh, trying to make sure that I season this really well because panko breadcrumbs are very, very bland, like super bland. They're great for crispiness, but they have like zero flavor. So I wanted to make sure that I seasoned this really well so that it did have lots of really great flavor. And this was really an interesting dish because the bottom of it has this bright, vibrant, citrusy thing going on where you're poaching the fish in this liquid and then the top of it had this beautifully seasoned, crispy breadcrumb that was a little bit smoky and garlicky. So this was really a winner of a dish. Um, I want to cook everything like this from now on because I loved it so much. But I did add some confit garlic. You can add in fresh garlic if you want, or you could just add in garlic powder. That would actually be what I would do if I didn't have this confit garlic, because I would really be worried about the fresh garlic kind of burning a little bit, because we're cooking this at a very high heat. But if that's what you want to try and that's what you have, give it a shot. Um, I'm sure that it works out better than I picture in my head. I haven't tried it myself. So I just mashed my confit garlic in there, and then we're adding in some Parmesan cheese. I just kind of shredded up probably about half a cup. Uh, you can just use the stuff in the shaker tub if that's what you have just kind of work with what you have on hand you know don't run out and buy a block of parmesan cheese just for this recipe just work with what you got i'm going to mix that in really really well because as i said this is going to top the fish that fresh parm is a little bit harder to mix in um because it's kind of like 
really sticky and clinging, I guess. <laughs> Sticky's not really the best word, but you know what I mean. So I'm gonna mix that really, really, really well and get everything nicely incorporated and mash that garlic in there so that it's kind of like mixed around with everything. And then we're gonna go ahead and prep everything to go in the oven. So I've got my casserole dish and I'm putting, putting some garlic oil in there. Um, the recipe actually calls for butter in the bottom, but I decided I wanted to use the garlic oil for just a little bit extra flavor because I have it and I like it. But you can go with butter, plain oil, whatever you want. Um, I put my fish in there and you could use tilapia, you could use shrimp, whatever you have. I am using swai fish because it is on clearance at Sam's Club for a great price and my family really likes it. Um, it's a, um, I don't know, more full bullet body type fish. It reminds me a little bit more of cod as far as texture goes, but it's so good. So I'm seasoning that with some salt and some pepper. And then to my garlic oil on the bottom of the pan, I am adding some lemon juice. I'm just using this stuff in the fridge. I did not shred or juice a lemon for this. And then I'm adding in some white wine, but you could do chicken broth if you want to, that's fine too. But I've got this bottle of wine that's been in my fridge for a little bit and I forgot about it. So I'm trying to use it so I don't waste it. And then I'm just gonna top everything with this crispy topping and I'm gonna try to make sure that I, I coat as much as I can on top of the fish and kind of pat it down. It does make this crispy, it kind of like, it sticks really, if you press it down, it sticks and adheres to the fish really, really well. When you pull it out when you're eating and it kind of has like um, battered fish vibes almost, but so much flavor. Oh my gosh, so much beautiful flavor, it was wonderful. I, like I said, I love the mixing of the, um, the citrus on the bottom that's poaching the fish and then that crispy, smoky, garlicky, salty top was so good. What a combination, absolutely loved it. So I just poured all of that on the fish and that goes in, an, in the oven and it bakes for about 12 to 15 minutes. I will link the original recipe down below for y'all. And then I'm just dressing up a box of rice-a-roni. I've got the chicken broccoli rice-a-roni and I took half a bag of frozen broccoli and thawed it in the microwave, chopped it up and added it in at the very beginning stages of cooking a box of rice-a-roni. And then I just cooked it following the box instructions, adding my water and spice blend and all that. And there's the fish when it came out of the oven. Oh, this was so good. I can't wait to have this again. So much flavor. And that was dinner, broccoli, rice, and fish. It was fantastic. And I actually felt like this was kind of bordering on healthy there. There was a lot of butter, but it was good, y'all. All right, so that does it for this week's What's for Dinner. I will list or link recipes down below. I hope you guys will try them out at home and let me know what you think. Hope you guys are having an awesome, awesome weekend, and I will see you this week with a grocery haul, a What's for Dinner, and a food prep video. Bye.